Well, good evening, folks. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you again. And as usual, a warm welcome back to What's For Tea. My name's Cheryl, if you didn't know. If you're new, a warm welcome to you also. Like I said, this is What's For Tea and my name is Cheryl. And tonight for tea, we had this lovely Irish stew done in the slow cooker. Now, this isn't your sort of traditional Irish stew because Irish stew would typically be made with lamb. Now, we're not the biggest lovers of lamb so I've gone ahead and made this with beef so don't come from in the comments because <laughs> I know that it should be made with lamb so if you want to make it you know really authentic then you really should be using lamb but like I said we used beef and what's given it the Irish twist is the fact that I'm using Guinness as well as stock you know it's just going to give it a lovely rich flavour but although it's rich you know it's not too rich and it's not very thick either so it's best served in a bowl with some crusty bread at the side. We actually had sourdough bread with a wee bit of butter in, you know, just for dunking into that gravy. And it was absolutely delicious and incredibly simple as most slow cooker recipes are. So as usual, all of my ingredients that I'm using will be in the description box down below. And I've got cups and grams, that kind of thing, just, you know, just to suit whatever you are. So this is what I'm using tonight. If you want to give it a wee go for your shelf. The first thing I've got there is 250 grams of plain flour. I've got one large onion I've just cut into large chunks. You'll need three to four large potatoes. Again, just keep the skin on them and cut them into large chunks. I've got 240 mils of Guinness, about a pound and a half of stewing or braising steak, two pints of chicken stock, two large carrots. Again, just cut them into large chunks. You want all of your veg quite big and chunky in this stew. I've got one tablespoon of tomato puree or tomato paste. I've got one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of paprika. If you don't like paprika, I mean, you can just use pepper instead. You'll need three to four bay leaves and one teaspoon of chopped garlic. And you'll also need a wee bit of olive oil for frying. Just before I move on, I trust that you all had a wonderful Christmas and so many of you, you know, you were asking to see pictures of Jasper with his Christmas jumper on. So I've added that to the end of the video and also our Christmas tree this year because there are quite a few of you had asked to see that as well. I did post that on Instagram, but not everybody follows me over there. So I've added that onto the end of this recipe just for those who have asked for it. So yeah, so let's move on and we'll see what's next. So like I said, I'm going to be using Guinness. So it's about half of this bottle. So it's just under halfway. So 240 mils of Guinness. And this is the garlic that I'm using. I didn't actually have any fresh. I've had fresh garlic and I definitely use fresh garlic. But this is handy if you don't have any. So a teaspoon of that. And like I said, a wee dash or two of olive oil. Now, I use olive oil because, you know, it withstands higher temperatures better and it doesn't burn. So first thing we're going to do is get our beef prepared for searing. And this is the beef that I've got here. I actually picked this up from the local butcher this morning and it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, when it's cooked for a long time, it just falls apart. And it was just under eight pounds. And like I said, this is about a pound and a half. And this will serve around about five people generously. So the first thing you want to do is get your slow cooker on to high. And we're going to cook this for about six hours. You can also do it on low for about eight hours. So grab your bowl and pop your flour in. This is just plain flour. And now we're going to give it a bit of flavour. So I'm going to pop in a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of smoked paprika. But if you prefer, like I said, just use paper if you don't have pap pap paprika or you don't like it. So once it's all mixed round, you just want to get your beef coated in that seasoned flour. Now just do it in batches just a few bits at a time so it doesn't all stick together and your flour doesn't get all mushy. Shake off your excess and pop it into a different bowl. Just like this. Easy. So like I said, just do it in small batches because, you know, I what I've done before is I, I've just lumped it all in at the one time and your flour can get all sort of messed up. So, it's you know, it's well worth taking the couple of extra minutes doing it this way. So pop over to your cooker and you want a medium to high heat and pop in your olive oil. 
Like I said, I prefer to use olive oil because you can cook it at a much higher heat and it doesn't burn. And again, you just want to sear your beef all over or brown it all over. Again, just do this in small batches. You don't want to overcrowd your pan because you do want it to fry. And once you're happy, you just pop it into a bowl. It doesn't take long at all, just a few minutes on each side. Well worth it, this step, because you're going to protect your meat and also it's going to help to give you a bit of a thicker gravy at the end. And I, I, I couldn't actually find my tongs. If you've got tongs, you know, you're better using tongs for this rather than a spatula. So go over to your slow cooker. First thing you want to pop in are your carrots, followed by your potatoes. You always want to put the things that take longest to cook at the bottom of your slow cooker. And I'm just going to pop my beef on top, followed by my Guinness. You can use a can of Guinness as well. You know, if you can't find a bottle, it's more or less the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's just going to give it a lovely, rich flavour. Now you want to pop half of your stock in. So you're using two pints. You want to pop in a pint of your stock. Keep the other pint back for now. Now get back over to your cooker. Use the same frying pan that you use for your beef. Pop in your onions. Again, you want to keep your onion quite chunky. Pop on a wee bit of salt and this is going to, you know, help draw out the moisture from your onions. And I'm going to pop another wee bit of smoked paprika in there. But like I said, if you don't like paprika, just use a wee pinch of pepper. And I'm also going to pop in one teaspoon of garlic. Another wee bit of oil because it was quite dry and also the tomato puree. You just want to give this a good stir around. And then you're going to use your other pint of chicken stock just to bring everything together. Give it a good stir and bring it up to a simmer. And once it's simmering, you can go and chuck that into your slow cooker on top of everything else. The smell of this was lovely. <laughs> you could smell this throughout the whole house. Give it a wee poke down. And the last thing you're going to do is pop in three or four bay leaves. Pop your lid on and cook this on high for six hours or low for eight hours. And this is what you'll have at the end. And it was absolutely delicious. Now you don't want to stir this around too much or your potatoes are going to completely break up and disintegrate. So I was being very careful with this. So all you've got to do now is pop it into a bowl. Like I said, this is quite a soupy stew. If you wanted a thicker stew, you know, you could add in some gravy thickener or something. We didn't want to do that because we did actually want to have it with bread and just to sort of mop up that extra gravy that's in there. But it was so tasty. Look how dark and rich that gravy is. So we just had, like I said, a wee bit of sourdough bread and butter at the side. Oh, my mouth's actually, you know, it's watering watching this again because I'm remembering how tasty it was. But yeah, that was it. And this was me sitting at the table and I just wanted to show you how tender these potatoes are and how tender the beef actually was because it's hard, quite hard to get that over on camera, you know, unless you actually show how easy it is to cut in. You know, I'm just using a fork, no knife, and that is just falling apart and it's full of flavour as well. Oh, delicious. Highly recommended this one, guys. You know, if you do like your stews and things, you cannot go wrong. So this was wee Jasper with his Christmas hoodie on. This had a wee hood in the back and it was so cute. It was a wee bit on the tight side, though. This was a small and I think it would have been better with a medium. We didn't keep it on him too long because he wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> so, yeah, ultra, you know, ultra, ultra cute, though. And I just thought I'd give you a wee look at our Christmas tree this year. It's going down soon, you know, and I'm always sad when the decorations come down because I love Christmas and putting the tree up. Not so keen on taking it back down again because it tends to leave some mess. 
but I just like the lights, you know, twinkling away and it just seems to brighten the room up. This is actually the back of our dining room. We've got a really long sort of lounge dining room with a sort of doors in the middle. And this is right up at the back window that faces onto our rear garden. So this is sort of out the way, tucked out the way up the back. So we only, we only really see the tree, you know, if we're sitting at the dining table, which is just off to the right, which you can't see. So fairly simple, fairly traditional. It's just an artificial tree and it's so easy to get up and down. I mean, this goes back into the box. I mean, you take it out of the box, all the branches sort of fall down. Um, they're on these sort of um, heavy metal arms. So you don't really have to do much to this tree. It's sort of We've had this for six years and it's still in great condition. So these are just a few of my wee favourite decorations. That's a wee sort of message in a bottle. That's one of our favourites. And we like all these wee sort of see-through ones that you can actually, are clear and you can see through. Like that one you see there with the holly and the berries inside. And there's just some of our gifts underneath. Fairly simple, but yeah, I love Christmas. I'm like a big kid. And that's another one of my favourites. This is the one with wee Santa Claus inside with the moving artificial snow at the bottom. So cute. So like I said, guys, I trust that you had a fantastic Christmas yourself. I really, you know, I hope you did. Whether you're spending it alone or with family or whatever you're doing, I hope you had, you know, a nice festive time with yourself. And that's another one of our favourites. I actually got this one engraved in 2012. So I'm always careful, you know, when I'm putting these away, that especially the glass ones, that I don't break them. Because I would like to have them for a wee while. So that's it. That was a wee look at our tree this year. And then wee Jasper with his jumper on. He actually had a second jumper, but it was far too small. And I didn't want to risk, you know, putting it on in case I to pull these wee arms and things around. I didn't want to do that. So that one didn't go on. But, you know, I did manage to put that one on him. But it was only on for about 10 minutes for the pictures. And that was it. Came straight back off again. So I don't think I'll be wearing that one again. So, yeah. So thank you very much, guys. Like I said, for coming over and checking out the wee recipe. And mind to let me know if you're going to give it a go. Because it's one of the tastier ones. And like I said, because it's a slow cooker recipe, ultra, ultra simple and bags of flavour with that stock and the beef and the Guinness. Oh, just absolutely wonderful and certainly one I'll be doing again shortly. So until I see you next time, guys, mind to take care of yourselves and I'm going to try and pop in tomorrow with a wee shopping haul and then I'll be back on Sunday as usual with Meals of the Week and I'll show you what we had for Christmas dinner and Boxing Day and all that kind of good stuff because I know there are quite a few of you you know, out there keen to see that. So hopefully I shall see you back, if if not tomorrow, for the shopping haul and on Sunday for Meals of the Week. So until you decide to join me again, mind to take care of yourselves and from our wee humble kitchen and house in Scotland to wherever you are in the world. Lots of love, take care and bye for now. Bye now. <laughs>